Hello everyone. I hope you're doing well and keeping safe. I'm happy to announce the launch of the third edition of Everest Group's Engineering Services Top 50 list. Like every year, this year's list is also fairly interesting as it sees significant uh, movements in service provider rankings and it also sees uh, new players being featured as a part of the top 50. Before I get into uh, my observations from this year's list, let me quickly tell you what the list is about. It features the global top 50 engineering service providers based on their calendar year 2020 revenue, as well as the year on year growth that they've seen during the same time frame. The list is fairly interesting for enterprises given it gives a holistic view into the engineering services landscape and how enterprises are looking to build an optimized uh, outsourcing portfolio in these times pushed by the need for talent on one hand and the need for optimizing costs on the others, this list becomes uh, extremely useful for them. On the service provider side as well, this list is useful for them to build a view of how their competition is performing. Now, uh, coming on to sharing some of my observations from the list. The first, uh, Actually, 28 out of the top 50 engineering service providers witnessed a year-on-year -year degrowth in 2020. Uh, amid the project cancellations and the decision-making delays by enterprises, this was bound to happen. But what's interesting to note here is that 22 of the 28 service providers who witnessed a degrowth are actually pure play service providers. For them, uh, the kind of exposure they have to the heavy engineering verticals like automotive, aerospace and defense, industrial products, etc., plus a very limited foray into digital engineering has led them to this fate in 2020. In fact, digital engineering is one such theme where we've seen enterprises sustaining uh, investments and growth despite them being in the cash conservation mode. So uh, the need to deliver superior end user experiences, as well as uh, to enhance the overall operational resilience that has ha uh, helped uh, support investments in this space. Coming on to the second point, uh, very interestingly, broad based players have been gaining ground uh, in the engineering services top 50. So if we look at the cumulative revenue of the top 50 over the years, uh, the share of broad-based players has increased. Uh, it stood at 34% in 2018, then it increased to 38% in 2019, and in 2020 it stood at 40%. Uh, for these players, what has been working out is a uh, balanced focus across product-centric as well as service-centric industries, uh, decent play in digital engineering, as well as uh, you know, these players being fairly active on the inorganic growth front. Which actually brings me to the third and the last observation here, which is M&A. In 2020, as business witnessed a slowdown, we would have expected the service providers to also uh, limit their investments, right? But on the contrary, on the M&A front at least, we've seen service providers being opportunistic and grabbing assets to build and scale up uh, some competencies. If we compare with 2019, uh, you know, among the top 50 players, we tracked some 15 acquisitions in that year. But uh, in 2020, we actually tracked uh, 18 such M&As and some of them were fairly large as well. So uh, that's all that I wanted to share with you today. I hope you liked some of these observations and feel free to access the detailed list, uh, the link to which is available in the description of this video. Thank you and stay safe.